Hi everybody, welcome back. So I thought I would continue showing you guys some of the graphic design resources and tools that I have. Um, they're just really fun to look at and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Um, this collection of items um, are some things that a lot of times the paper companies will give you to demonstrate how to use their paper. And there's just some really cool samples in here that I would like to show you. I think I'll start with this one. This is the Nina Paper Company. And this, one, this book is focused on, um, it's an older book, but it's focused on a collection of papers that they call the Design Collection. And they're just really fancy paper. <laughs> um, and you'll see some examples of how to make them even fancier with print production techniques. But, um, I guess they have this, like, um, half sheet on the cover. It's bound. Um, they call this perfect binding, which, um, when, I don't know if you can see that well, but that is what is called perfect binding. And then it's scored here, so that when you open, it scores at that mark, making it easier to open. But this paper is interesting because right here there's a nice texture. But as you go around, you'll see the texture is not on the spine and it's not on the back. So that was a special piece um, that was milled specifically for this, which is possible. And I don't know if you can see it, but the back a very fine texture. The back has a different texture altogether. So I don't think they actually talk about how they achieved that, but um, this has been a very special item, and of course, they're the paper company, so they can do whatever they want. But you got some foil stamping and some just regular print here. I'm assuming that could be a matte foil, but I don't think so. But that paper is um, milled to be that color. It's not printed because you can see where the core of it is. That plum color. Same with that sheet. It is milled to be that color. No white core. This is a very thick sheet as well. I don't know if it comes through or not, but this is the... I've always referred to this type of paper as onion skin. very thin. Um, partially uh, transparent. And they put a gold foil on these items along with a spot color of some very fluorescent ink. And with these books, if you are curious about how the look was achieved, it normally will tell you down here. This is Eames Text Weight White. Um, printed with one PMS, which is this fluorescent color here, and a foil. So they tell you that so that you can try to reproduce that with their paper. a shimmer pearlescent paper. Very nice. I took a swatch of it out at some point to show someone. <laughs> and this is a paper I've used several times. This is SE or SA at SE Pearless Latte 105 pound cover. 
smooth digital printed four color process using the HP Indigo. It's a great machine. And then we have another half sheet with some amazing texture. This kind of embossing when there's no ink, it's just embossed. That's called a blind emboss. This is a regular emboss. Um, there are other embosses, um, multi level embosses or sculpted embosses that are um, more detailed. But this looks like just a regular emboss, but it's very nice. This paper may not come through very well. It has a very fine ridged line to it. Very nice. That image printed beautifully on it. It's called Star White Tiara. This is the high tech finish. Just for color process printing. Kind of mesmerizing. <laughs> and sometimes when they want to do different sorts of techniques, you will see that they have these like um, folded over pages. And it's because they want to do some type of die cut on the other side but they don't want it to show through on this side so on this page you can see there's a die cut for an insert Another. This is the another textured paper. I think it's called. It's an Oxford paper, just textured. And this is a Star Dream Copper. I've used this paper before for a project. It's a text weight, it's very thin. I did a die cut and foil stamping. Another pearlized paper. It looks like we had an insert here at one point. I don't know where it's going to. But you can see the Oh, 
something. And this is an example of packaging that I've never pulled out. Let's try to build this. say that if this were a real profit, I would, um, maybe it was, I don't know, but I would prefer a thicker, a thicker stock. I'm sure these would be assembled, um, not by hand, so maybe a little bit more precise. So it has a bit of a, a bit of a texture to it. Very, very soft. Well, you can kind of fit it right back in there. Um, I'm actually not familiar with this paper. It's called Mona Lisa. I've never heard of this one. So, this gives a blind embossed look, but it's not really a blind embossed because there's actually printing on that. There's some black ink. So this is where you can use embossing and ink to kind of give this ghosted effect that kind of helps illustrate a little better, but still maintains the idea. This is very nicely done. You can see I've taken a chunk of that out as well to have it as an example. This is a paper called Canaletto. This 
this is all in here. This is quite a heavy board. This is called Plike. Plike is a, um, you can see the matte tone of the paper. And the image actually has some type of gloss over it. But the plaque is very matte, very soft touch. So if you print on it with a, a spot aqueous, maybe that's what that is. Um, it doesn't say exactly, but that could be like a spot aqueous coating over the image, maybe, to give it a different sheen. It could just be the ink. And then we have the foil stamping. She is almost like, um, it's very smooth. It has an uncoated look, but it has a coated feel. Not sure what that is. Natural evolution of ivory. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that particular sheet of paper either. And this has some fluorescent ink right there. It's probably a Pantone PMS color. I've seen that throughout this book. Um, yeah. One fluorescent PMS. Yeah. Star white. But then, in the end, you'll see, it gives you all the different specs again, uh, the different production credits. Who did the graphic design? Who did the printing? So, very neat. It's a very good um, example of inspiration. This is another really cool example. This is, um, it looks like the point of this book was to encourage sustainable packaging. So, you know, it's great for these companies if people want to be sustainable and move away from plastic because then they'll use paper and they'll use their paper. So, this is an example of paper packaging. And I'm trying to give some information about that and some samples. some really nice information about um, the history of the paper company here and their dedication to sustainability over the years. Source their fibers, um, how they um, the conservation efforts, you know, every day, as well as the recyclability of the papers. So most papers have an option. Most paper companies have an option for how much recycled material are in each each paper. They'll have some that don't have any, and then they'll have options that have, um, you know, a small amount. Then they'll have some that have, you know, high count. So. Unfortunately, most of the um, high, re highly recycled papers are more expensive. So, depending on what industry you're in, that may not be um, something that you can do. So then you just have to be more responsible with what you print, how many you print, and things like that. So there's still ways to be responsible, uh, even if you're not using recycled paper. Um, so this is an example that they have given um, 
of their paper having made this package. We can try to put it together. But it's um, a, a candle box in, in jar. So I guess this is the pieces for this box. Let's see. Let's see if I'll be able to actually make it without gluing them.
Mm. Almost got it. Just this one corner. So I think the candle would go in the center there, and these would be there to kind of protect it. And that folds down, gives you a flat pillow. And then this is the lid. And that's almost half of the lid, but. You can put your own little box together and see how it would look. One thing I think is kind of neat about these is I could basically, I mean it would be, you know, a lot of hand work, but I could flatten these out and make my own template. So it looks like if you needed to, they have a QR code. This is, a, this is a pretty old book, so I don't know if it'll still work or not, but a QR code that you could go and look at the, um, the, the, the way it's folded together. So this is just a fun little thing that they did. Interactive sample. And this was actually here. So this is a environmentally friendly paper called Environment. Um, it has a little recycled um, simple, so it's made of at least partially recycled materials. I'm sure you could look at the book for this and find out how much. But this is um, an example of a company that has a sustainable product that is actually looks like it's shampoo bar shampoo and 
they um, use a box for their bar of shampoo rather than using plastic. So for companies like that, it absolutely makes sense to promote your brand using sustainable packaging. Because that's in, in line with their brand's mission that only makes sense. foil over the soap bubbles. This is talking about using um, paper gift cards rather than plastic gift cards. So this is, um, these go with these different papers. This is, this is called um, a waterfall. Um, and it's, you know, page layout waterfall that's used a lot of times with samples. But sometimes um, I worked on a, um, a quick guide at one point that had a waterfall. And you would, you know, easily pick up at a point. So that's... Kind of what that's there for but these co these line up to the different points in the waterfall to tell you what paper they are and they all have different designs on them to kind of This one's really nice. This is a, um, a foil registered deboss. So that means deboss means it goes into the paper. And it's really crisp and really sharp. It looks really good. And that is a some type of clear iridescent foil. But you can still see the printing behind it. So really, really nice. I really like the sample. This, this is an example of a multi-level emboss. I don't know if you can tell, but in some places it's not as deep as others. They have a foil stamp and an emboss. Looks like they did the foil stamp first, then the emboss. And they call it a blind sculpted, yeah, sculptured emboss. As you can see, you can see from the other side. That looks like.
and they have all the production notes. Tell that talking about all the different types of paper and productions. But yeah. Um, these were a couple of really cool examples. Um, this is another little example I found floating around. But all of these things are really inspiring and I really love paper and how paper folds and how you can create with paper um, and different production techniques. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at all this stuff with me. Um, I really enjoy showing it and rediscovering some of the things that I've had in my little resource library for a very long time. It can be very inspiring to see these different things and what you can do. Um, when you do something as simple as, you know, a very bright pop of ink, um, or something as simple as um, an iridescent foil. This is one that had the bright ink. But simple, something as simple as that, you can tell that that is different, that that is not the same as this type of printing. It, it just jumps off the page differently. And how something as simple as an emboss with a little bit of a grease pen just makes something so elegant. So, very inspiring to look at for designers and such fun to flip through the pages. And I really enjoy putting together the little boxes. <laughs> anyway, um, I've got plenty more of these types of things that I would love to share with you. So, um, if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment. And um, I really thank everyone for watching. Um, I really enjoy sharing this kind of stuff with you. So, just let me know and I can do more of these kinds of things. Thanks. Bye.